So when you are basically busy with a bad scenario, you have to be very careful of your goods and services as well. Goods and services, basically. Because you must be very mindful of what constitutes something being a good, what constitutes something being a service. So we may have lightly touched on these principles as well, but like a good as we were touching base with like that extensive uh, elaboration with like the bag of oranges in exchange for money or whatever as we're trying to extrapolate with the consideration part a good in that instance it would have been oranges you know because you can touch oranges you can touch oranges it's a tangible tangible product That would have been a good in that situation. Whereas the service, in the very same example that we just used, it would have easily been the bookkeeping services. Because it is a service, it's not a good, you know, it is a service. You know, even though you can see the actual records in terms of the bookkeeping, uh, that would have been done typically on a laptop or in a computer presented on like, you know, spreadsheets or whatever the case, but that would have been a service. Another example of a service could easily be the granting of an advantage, you know, granting of an advantage. Or better elaborated, we can say, an intangible asset. Why? Because an intangible asset grants you the right of use. It grants you the right of use. And an intangible asset is something that you cannot see. You can see, sorry, but you can likely not touch it. You know, you can likely not touch it. It's intangible in nature. So, these are just the differences that you have to be mindful of. So, of course, goods and services can be supplied, you know. If you get a service, it's most likely made by somebody who supplies services, somebody who deals in granting people services. An accountant makes services, grants people services, bookkeeper grants people services. Whereas a uh, uh, super, supermarket owner, he doesn't grant people services, he sells goods to people, he sells products to people. So these are the actual differences that basically arise. They are both sellers, but they just provide different, uh, different systems. I would opt for systems because the one is a service, the other one is a product. So we can't say different products. Okay, maybe we can say different products, you know. The one product would be a system, uh, a service, which is, doesn't really sound right, but the other product could be a good, you know, bag of oranges, bag of potatoes, whatever the case. That would be trading stock, you know. So these are just uh, differences that we also have to be very mindful of as we basically, you know, figuring out as to whether we have any vet implications or what, uh, whatever the case would be. So of course we've now dealt with the portion where we've now deemed the person to be a vet vendor because they've satisfied the definition of the supply of goods and services by a vendor for uh, that are taxable in nature. And uh, of course, in harmony with the definition of an enterprise that spoke about all those other factors that are also present within the enterprise definition for the two to come into harmony with each other. So now, there also has to be a situation now where you've obviously wished or you've estimated that in a particular year, you're likely going to exceed the 1 million ten, ten over uh, in terms of being a registered vet vendor, compulsory registration, then you'd have to go through the source and obviously fill out the VET 101 form where you'd likely have to hand it over in person to a source official 
after having done so they will give you a vet 103 form which is basically a vet certificate from which point you can start you know uh, charging vet as a vet vendor and of course depending on the vet vendor category that you fought into you will have to be basically make your submissions so far as your vet 201 form is concerned and that's basically where we are so that is the thought process so the thought process that you should also be keeping in mind is to wanting to figure out the implications of that so far as that is concerned you likely also be be asking yourselves question as to do i have taxable supplies if the answer is yes you tick this box right do i have goods and services as defined if the answer is yes you tick the box do i meet the threshold of the 10 over or 12 month period if the answer is yes tick that box right do i have an enterprise as defined if the answer is yes with all those other components present you tick the box then once you tick all those boxes then you must then start charging vet because you would have likely registered as a vet vendor right and once you basically have registered as a vet vendor it will then be dependent as to when you start uh, paying your vet over dependent on the tax vet uh, the tax the the tax category that you fall into so far as the vet period right and once you are there you'll make your submissions uh, in terms of like you know your vet 201 form and that's basically where you would be you know so that's primarily what you should be thinking about uh, in terms of you being a vet vendor